basically every single app these days has some sort of AI inside of it. But the hard part about using AI is the fact that it's always been really difficult to track and trace how much money are you spending on a day by day basis throughout your application. Sometimes it just feels like a huge surprise that you're going to get at the end of the month to see just how much you're going to get charged from your AI provider. But luckily that is no longer the case because nowadays there are a lot of great tools out there that help you accurately track the LLM usage in your application so that you don't get hit with a surprise bill at the end of the month. And in this video, I'm going to be going over how I personally track all of the LLM usage in my application. It's a relatively straightforward solution, but it also did require a little bit of tweaking here and there to get it to work perfectly. So let me walk you through just how exactly I do that. All right, so the tool that I'm going to be using to track all of my LLM usage is going to be PostHawk. PostHawk is kind of just this all in one platform to help literally developers build successful products. I use it for feature flags as well as product analytics, experiments, all that stuff. But now recently they just added LLM observability right here. And for the record, this is not a sponsored video. I have done a sponsored video for PostHawk in the past, but this is 1 billion percent non-sponsored, but I don't do any sponsored videos anymore. It's just not how I like to monetize my channel. It just doesn't make me feel good. And just a quick little plug for myself, but instead of doing sponsorships to monetize my channel, instead I offer some one-on-one -on -one consultations down below if you want to get one-on-one -on -one advice from me to learn how to build an app, get some feedback on how to market your app, get some feedback on how to build your app. Just let me know. You can find the link to it in the description down below. So going back to the main focus of this video, let's talk about the LLM observability feature within PostHawk. So if you go here, you're going to see that this is what your dashboard within PostHawk is supposed to be. It's supposed to be a super lightweight solution that helps you track all of your users, your cost per user, your total cost, your cost per model, all that good stuff. But one thing I've noticed is that it works great when you're using OpenAI, but it doesn't really work that great if you're using an alternative LLM. So myself personally, I use Gemini as my main LLM provider. And I know some of you are like, what the hell? This guy's an idiot. Why are you using Gemini? I thought it sucks as an LLM model. I disagree. And I could go further in depth as to why I use Gemini over OpenAI in this video right here. So check it out if you're interested. And in terms of how you implement it within PostHog and OpenAI, it's really simple. You just create your PostHog client here and then you pass in your PostHog client into the PostHog parameter within the OpenAI constructor, which is, you know, pretty great. But as somebody that uses Gemini, it doesn't really work that out of the box. Now, the way that I had to do it was I had to go to the tutorials and guides and then I had to go look at this guide right here, how to set up LLM analytics for Cohere. I'm not going to lie, I've never even heard of Cohere. I don't really know what it does. But the reason why this tutorial is interesting is because it shows you how to set up post hoc using the Vercel AI SDK. So that was how I was going to start using this feature. I had had to start migrating my entire app over to using the Vercel AI SDK. And then from there, you can just wrap the Vercel AI SDK with tracing function right here. You pass in your model, you pass in all of your post hoc properties, and then it should be able to keep track of all of the metrics that you're supposed to fire. Now, let me show you how I did that from within my code. So the way that I did this is I had this one file that was called Gemini.ts. It should probably be changed to like AI.typescript instead, because theoretically, I don't have to use Gemini. But essentially, this is my one common utility function used throughout my entire application for all the AI needs. And in building this file, I created two functions. One is generate object with fallback. And then another one is generate text with fallback. So generate text with fallback just generates the text. And then generate object with fallback just generates the JSON object with specific schema that you pass in, which is a Zod type that you pass in here. And as you can see, when I created this function, I also had a with fallback added to it. The reason why I do this is because a couple weeks ago, I had an incident with Gemini 2.0 flash where the model was just failing out of nowhere. And my app kind of just died out of nowhere because users could not use it because the model was failing. So because of that, the way that I fixed this is that and first, initially, I attempt to run the model with Gemini 2.0 flash. And if any error is thrown, I then move over to here where I then run the same exact prompt, but then I run it with Gemini 1.5 flash instead, which was a little bit more stable. Now I can definitely add a lot more sophisticated retry logic, maybe something like retrying with Gemini 2 point flash with three times in a row with exponential back off with two second wait, four second wait or an eight second wait. But that's going to be something I add later on. So essentially, I had this one entry point of all of the LLM usage throughout my entire application. And it's essentially just a wrapper around the Vercel AI SDK because this generate object, that's the function call that is defined within Vercel AI. And as you can see right here, the with tracing function call, that is where the post hog tracing comes in, where I pass in the distinct ID for post hog to run these analytics on and a bunch of additional properties that I pass into the function right here. And now supposedly after wrapping everything with tracing function, it should work completely out of the box, right? Uh, not so much because when I did that and I went over to the LLM observability tab, the traces was working, the generative AI users was working, but the cost wasn't showing up at all. The cost by model, cost per user, everything cost related was completely broken. So as you can see, the cost for some reason was not being calculated correctly by post hog and the Vercel AI SDK. So I had to take matters in 
into my own hand. And then if we go over to the product analytics, you can see that I actually created this custom SQL query within PostHog to map out all of my costs. As you can see, I don't have that much data right now. It's only like two days worth. And it's like, what, 12 cents yesterday, three cents today or something like that. So obviously not too much usage right now, just because I just added it in. But essentially I had to go in and actually manually write this query based off of the PostHog events that it was sending, which was the AI generation event. From there, I had to go group everything by day, take the input token and output token counts. And then I passed in the pricing structure for Gemini, which is like 40 cents per output tokens and then 10 cents or 70 cents per million output tokens. And then I had to create this custom SQL code and inject it. And this is what ended up spitting out the proper calculations for the output token cost and the input token cost for post hop. And now after doing that, it finally worked to be able to calculate correctly the usage of all these LLMs across my application. So that's how I did it. It should luckily for you, if you are an open AI user, this should work completely out of the box. But if you're someone else using an alternative LLM like Anthropic or Gemini, something that you have to plug into the Vercel AI SDK and you're not seeing the cost being outputted, then you're going to have to do some manual configuration. And this is my SQL code that I use to map out my Gemini cost usage right here. So hope you found that helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.